Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no much good depending on your location. Please join in the struggle to liberate our people from the contraption. Like and share videos. Today is Friday, the 18th day of October 2024. I bring you news update. Nigeria is no longer working. Insecurity working with two legs in the northern region. Northern youths lament. Oh yes, that's what's happening now. The northern youths under the ages of coalition of northern groups have decried the impact of recent devaluation of the Naira. Inflation, petroleum subsidy removal, increase in electricity tariffs, and insecurity, among others, on the conditions of living in their region. That's not an region. Oh, yes. Now, the president of the group, Jamilu Charanchi, lamented at a one day community engagement program organized by the group, that's the CNG, Coalition of Northern Groups. As in a state chapter under the team. Imperative of popular participation in tackling social economic challenges bedeviling Nigeria through community solutions. Oh, yes, now Charanchi gave background on the informed decision for community engagement, saying the group has realized that leaders, especially from their region, are not ready to address the outline problems. Hence, there was need for them to take the bull by its horns. In the contribution of the development of their own region. Oh, yes, that's not a region. Yes. Now, he said the CNG believes that there is a need for a paradigm shift from government based to society based solutions that would enable comprehensive assessment and a coordinated approach to address the underlying causes of these challenges by the members of the community in the North. But yes, I again noted that the recent violent protest is a consequence of decades of failure by Northern Nigeria's political leadership leadership to harness the potential of the region. Yes. Now in challenges worse, quote We don't have the time to lament. All of us know that we are in serious problem. Nigeria is no longer working. People are suffering. People can no longer afford even one square meal. We are not talking about the three square meals per day. Insecurity is working with two legs in the northern part of the country. Northern Nigeria, a region rich, a region rich in cultural heritage, human and natural resources, holds significant potential for contributing to Nigeria's development. Despite this, the region remains the least developed, grappling with drug abuse, youth sensitiveness, the collapse of social values, and high levels of poverty, unemployment, illiteracy, and insecurity, which has led to socioeconomic indices in relation to other regions. To tackle the region's persistent challenges, the coalition of northern groups implemented several interventions, including a two-day roundtable Security Summit in Northern Nigeria, held in January 2024 at the Nigerian Air Resource Center in Abuja. Despite these efforts and some progress made, the North continues to experience a rise in banditry and other issues indicating need for increased commitment from all stakeholders to effectively address these problems. The recent devaluation of the Naira, inflation, petroleum subsidy removal, Increase in electricity tariffs and insecurity have further deteriorated the living conditions of the people. Millions of people lost their means of livelihood and wallowed in abject poverty. The consequences of these challenges have become more apparent during the recent violent national protest against hunger and general hardship, which have resulted in significant loss of life and destruction of public and private properties. In response to these pressing issues, the CNG recognizes that for decades, Northern Nigeria has been suffering from leadership decay, collapse of societal values, immorality, and lack of leadership values. These challenges have over the years culminated in a pervasive leadership crisis leading to poverty, unemployment, and illiteracy, evident in the high number of out-of-school children and insecurity across the north. At the same time, 
The failures of formal and informal institutions have, over the years, compounded the challenges. Hence, there is a need for collective action to address these challenges and promote development in the region. This engagement aims to examine the current state of affairs in northern Nigeria, focusing on the rising moral decadence among our youths and the social, cultural and economic challenges facing the region. It exists to highlight the critical need for increased community involvement in the management of their affairs. End of quote. Now, the northern, the northern youths are lamenting now, saying Nigeria is not working, not functioning. That is the point that the country is not functioning or no longer functioning, no longer working. Now, the insecurity, working, working, moving, making movement, that's working. Yes, with both legs. The insecurity, working. Yes, working from Kasina to Sokoto, from Sokoto to Zanfra, from Zanfra to Brono, from Brono, to Kaduna, from Kaduna to Kebi, from Kebi to Gombe, from Gombe to Kano, to Niger. Yes, to the entire northern states, 19 northern states. This is working work in there. We have not mentioned the north central states, okay, like Benue, Nasrawa. Oh, yes, talk about Taraba. So they said insecurity walking with both legs, with the two legs walking, whereas the country no longer functioning, and that's why the insecurity walking. They talked about abject poverty. Abject poverty. Yes, they make comparisons with other regions. Say they not, they are suffering more. They are suffering more. The insecurity, they are suffering. They are suffering hardship. They are suffering poverty. The endemic poverty. Oh, yes. So they are suffering it. Malnutrition. Out of school children. They are suffering it. So who is the cause of all these problems, you may ask. But they have rightly pointed it out. They say their leaders have neglected them. Oh, yes. They said they are leaders. They are past leaders. They have neglected the North. Of course, they have taken the, the highest share. Yes. In the governance of the country. The North. From 1960... They said the independence came. Dr. Namazuk Iwa suffered. Okay? But the lacks of Awolowo, Antonio Inahoro, oh yes, to, and the other southerners to secure independence because the North were not ready actually for independence. It was the southern region that actually worked for the independence of Nigeria. Yes, the North wanted the, Brit the, 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 the British to continue. But the Southerners, they persisted, they wanted pressure and campaigned vigorously for independence of Nigeria. And it came. The North took over the leadership. Yes, immediately the independence came because uh, the British, of course, uh, they know that these guys from the South, mounted pressure on them to live. They are, exposed, they are experienced, they are exposed, they are educated, they are aware of their surroundings and their milieu. They know what's happening. They, they, you know, they know everything about... Uh, the, uh, the, the activities of the Brit British uh, government in Nigeria then. So they decided to hand over to the northerners. Who never wanted to, the British to leave. And so from 1960, the independence came towards northerners. From there, they continued to dominate, dominate, dominate until 1999, when they said they are in a democratic setting. Okay? And the Basanjo, you know, took over the mantle of leadership. Oh yes, still with the northern, you know, the northern, uh, you know, conspiracy theory. Oh yes, because it was LS Kwame. They founded the PDP. He was at the forefront of becoming the president of Nigeria from in 1999. But the northern conspiracy theorists, they gathered and they handed it over to Obasanjo. In, in, you know, you know, you know, you know, at the twilight of the election, to the election, they handed it over to him. Okay, so and it continues after Abbas and Joe, Yeradua. Okay, after Yeradua, Jonathan, after Jonathan, I've seen uh, Buhari, after Buhari, Tinibu. So that is it. The North has been there 
for decades. Yet they complain of poverty, insecurity, they complain of uh, malfunctioning in infrastructure, they complain of lack of basic amenities, they complain of uh, out of school children, they complain of uh, malnutrition, they complain of everything negative and bad. They are there. So that is a problem to them. Oh, yes. Take the power and suffer more. Right? That's case in Nigeria. You take the power and you suffer more. So even those who I say they are governing now, they are leading now, you know, talking about the Yorubas, they have taken over the economy of the country by means of appointment, appointing their people into strategic positions in the economy. Yet, they are the ones suffering more. After the North, they are following them. The protests you have been seeing, they are the one protesting, crying over hardship. Because most of them are civil servants. Yes, they are working for government. And how much is a civil servant, uh, you know, take home? 30,000 naira. Yes. So they work for people in the Southwest. Southwest people like white collar jobs. Yes. And they are suffering because the wage of, the, of uh, you know, the people, even in government, it's not been increased. How much more the private sector? Yes. So that is it. They all suffer it. Get power and suffer. Get power and suffer. It shows that it is the end of the road. Oh yes, it's a nomocotalism something. Because uh, you get power, you suffer more. That is the point. Ascend to power in Nigeria, become the president, your region will suffer more. 